now. Perfect. Okay, I've got my gavel. And good morning. I'm going to go ahead and call this session of the City of Cedar Woolley Hearing Examiner to order. For the record, today is September 24th, 2020 at 10 a.m. We have one item on the agenda today. This is number CUP 2020-125, a request for a conditional use permit to allow the construction of an auxiliary storage building behind an existing commercial building uh, at 620 SR20. My name is Andrew Reeves. I'm a hearing examiner with Sound Law Center who the city has selected to hold certain land use application hearings like this one. And today it will be my role uh, to collect evidence in the form of exhibits and testimony to determine whether the proposal complies with the city's comprehensive plan, zoning ordinances, critical areas ordinances, and the specific requirements for approval of a conditional use permit under section 1756 060 of the Cedra Woolley Municipal Code. Uh, to that end, I received, uh, I believe it's eight exhibits in advance of the hearing today uh, that were labeled A through H. And uh, these include a staff report prepared by city staff, the application materials themselves, which included a project narrative describing how the proposal would comply with the requirements for a conditional use permit, information on the environmental review that occurred under our state's environmental policy act uh, and information uh, related to this hearing and the notice of application and hearing that was provided uh, and one comment letter from the department of ecology so i'm going to go ahead and admit those exhibits into the record should anyone have additional exhibits they'd like admitted into the record let me know when it's your opportunity to testify and I'll go ahead and address admitting additional exhibits at that time. All testimony today will be under oath or affirmation. That's because for my decision to be appealed under our state's land use petition act, the recording of today's hearing as well as the admitted exhibits would serve as the foundation for any such appeal. Uh, we continue to hold these hearings using remote meeting technology, uh, which surprisingly does seem to work. And so I thank everyone for participating uh, and uh, in this process as we keep moving forward with uh, days of coronavirus. But in terms of getting testimony under oath, I'm going to go ahead, even though I can't see anyone, I currently imagine that everyone is raising their hand for me and I'm going to swear in all of our potential witnesses. So if you can raise your hands for me, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in any testimony you give here today? I do. Yeah. Excellent. So everyone is sworn in and everyone mm -hmm. uh, recognizes that they're being recorded as well. Uh, so we can go ahead and move forward. Uh, the basic order that we typically follow and I believe we're going to follow today is first we'll hear uh, from city staff who will give an overview of the proposal along with any recommendations they may have. Then we'll turn it to our applicant a representative to provide any additional information they feel that myself or members of the public should be aware of. Uh, then we'll see if there are any members of the public interested in testifying. Currently, we do not have any members of the public uh, that have joined us, but we'll check again when we get to that point. And if appropriate at the end, we'll turn it back to the applicant team and city staff to respond to any such public testimony. So with that, thank you all. We'll get started and I will turn it over to Catherine Ware uh, to begin for the city. So please proceed. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the city received an application for a, excuse me, <clears throat> auxiliary storage building at 640 uh, State Route 20. This building would replace a building that was formerly on the property that was ex or, um, that was taken down in 2019. Um, independent storage buildings are not an uh, outright allowed use in the mixed commercial zone. So a conditional use permit was required. So city staff reviewed the proposal against the condition or the criteria for conditional use permits and other relevant code sections from C.J. Williams Municipal Code and approve or recommend approving the proposal with conditions. Um, the conditions being providing a landscape plan um, at time of building application, comply with the mitigation requirements set forth by the mitigated determination of non-significance, and maintain a site obscuring fence around storage building. And if this fence is to be altered or replaced, a fence detail must be submitted to the Cedar Valley Planning Department for review. Thank you. 
Great. And did, did that conclude your comments today, Ms. Ware? Yes. Yeah, that does. <laughs> okay. And just so I understand the layout essentially a little bit better, but uh, it would access to this site be off uh, what I see in the staff report as Crossroads Square, or do you come off State Route 20? There's a through, and Bob can fill in too, but there's a drive lane that goes from Cook Road to State Road 20 that goes through the property. Okay, so there's a drive lane. Yeah, because based on the way the built, so the buildings it looks like, or the building uh, would be to the eastern side of the property, uh, sort of up against the eastern property boundary, uh, and then you'd access it you know, from, from the West, essentially. Does that seem right? Yes, yeah, sir. So you can. Okay. <laughs> Just trying to make sure um, I understood that. So. Yeah. yeah if, if I may add the, the, the proposed uh, auxiliary storage building would be located in uh, virtually the identical spot that the uh, demolished structure that was taken down uh, last year um, within its ex the previous footprint of that building. Um, as Ms. Ware uh, mentions, there is, there is access to that portion of the site, both from SR20, as well as it, it's, it's somewhat of a flag lot somewhat. It's got a, it's got a, a drive line, uh, private drive access from Cook Road to the north as well. So, uh, access to that site could come off of either road, but you are correct in saying that the drive line is to the west of the structure. Great, thank you. And for the record, that was uh, Mr. Bob Hayden, correct? Y yes, sir. Okay, just making sure for purposes of the audio recording, we know who's talking because it's not always obvious using the remote meeting technology. So we, we will come back to you uh, momentarily, Mr. Hayden. I just had a couple more questions uh, for Ms. Ware. So, uh, so Ms. Ware, I believe I misspoke at the outset. The, the location address is 640 SR20, not 620, correct? That's correct. Okay, my apologies. And then because we always ask, has the comprehensive plan or zoning code been amended in any way which would have an impact on this application since it was deemed complete? No. And then uh, I don't recall, I know it's come up in the past, but are there specific uh, is there a specific timeline on when it would need to occur? to uh, have someone say it on the record more and more as I've had, uh, you know, especially during the last seven or eight months, there have been issues with construction uh, not happening. Uh, so it's good to know what those rules are. So two years is what is standard under the code. And then the letter from Kaylin Piazza from Department of Ecology uh, was just highlighting all the uh, potential cleanup areas nearby, but there there was no real impact on this proposal, correct? Sorry? Uh, the letter from uh, Department of Ecology uh, that Kaylin Piazza, the SEPA coordinator sent, it didn't appear that there was any impact on this proposal. Is that accurate? It, it, no, no. Yeah, sometimes we'll hear back from them on SEPA checklists and um, notices and they'll just it's kind of informational like these areas are within I think it's 750 feet of the site yeah but because of the nature of this project there's no there's no thought that uh, these contaminated or potentially cont contaminated sites uh, would would have any impact on this site itself that's correct yes okay excellent um, I think <laughs> I didn't have a ton of questions. Obviously, this one is uh, uh, more straightforward than many that we have. But uh, Mr. Coleman, did you have anything you wanted to add? Nope. OK. Uh, anything further from you, Ms. Ware, before we hear from Mr. Hayden? 
Uh, nope, I think we're good. Great. So, Mr. Hayden, thank you. You spoke uh, earlier on the record, but if you could just introduce yourself, that would be great. My name is Bob Hayden. I am a construction project manager for the Upper Skagit Indian Tribe. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to have this uh, permit application heard before Mr. Hayden Examiner, and I appreciate the county's uh, help and and kind of helping me put this together and 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 obviously for their support of the project um as as you stated earlier this is just a uh it's going to be a, a structure a storage building that is owned and uh occupied by uh, a couple of different entities within the upper Skagit indian tribe it is um, going to support both existing businesses that are located within with on that parcel as well as provide uh, a, a small storage and workshop area to support uh, the multifamily holdings that the Upper Skagit Indian Tribe has within the city's jurisdiction of Cedar Woolley. Uh, storage of water heaters and spare parts, doors and that kind of thing. Um, there's really not much to else for me to say. You know, it is the tribe's intention that um, you know immediately upon. Uh, Mr. Hings is owner's uh, uh, approval. Uh, we will begin our application process for construction through the city of Cedar Woolies. It's our intention to, to, begin pro to begin the construction of this project this winter. Okay. And so then does the tribe own on the site plan, it's an existing pharmacy. Is that a building within the tribe's holdings? There's yes, the tribe uh, currently owns and operates the pharmacy within that building. Portion of that building is vacant at this point in time. Um, and one of the spaces with some of the square footage located within this future building would be to support both the pharmacy and possibly whatever other business entity uh, commercial activity occurs within the confines of that building. Okay, so basically, uh, I see it's partitioned or, or proposed, obviously, uh, but partitioned into about six sort of separate uh, storage spaces, it looks like. And so some of those will serve the existing buildings in the area that are controlled by the tribe, and then some will, will be used for storage uh, for uh, the multifamily residential housing that the, the tribe has in the area as well. So is that correct? Right? Correct. Great. Um, so I guess the the other question, the purpose is not to sort of rent these spaces out as if this is, you know, uh, a mini storage facility. It's more for internal use by the tribe. Is that right? That, that is correct. Internal use only. Okay, great. Um, I don't believe I have any further questions. As I said, I, you know, I, I can tell that uh, staff has worked with you and you had produced a uh, application that, that addressed the criteria for conditional use permit. So in my view, uh, I see no issue with uh, approving this proposal with the recommended conditions from staff. And you had an opportunity to review those recommended conditions, Mr. Hayden? Uh, I did, and, and we are agreeable to all of them. Excellent. Uh, so then with that, I'll see if uh, Ms. Ware has anything further. But uh, like I said, I, you know, straightforward application. Obviously, you're rebuilding something uh, in the same general footprint, and uh, the use does not appear uh, that it would have any detrimental or negative impacts on the area and will hopefully be a benefit uh, to uh, the community and the tribe. So uh, I think, uh, I, I don't have anything further. Did you have anything further, Mr. Hayden? No, I do not. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Ware, did any, anything further from the city at this point? We do not have anything further. Well, if only they were all that straightforward. So I think, <laughs> I think with that, we can go ahead and end today's hearing. Uh, my, my office will produce a decision here in the next 10 working days. And uh, Mr. Hayden, you'll be able to move forward before, hopefully before the rainy season really gets started with this proposal. So thank you everyone. Uh, best of luck with the project and wishing everyone uh, good health moving forward. With that, we can go ahead and end today's hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Catherine, please stop the recording.